Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-10. Last time our heroes descended into the sewers below Phoenix and discovered a group of homeless children. The poor living conditions were exacerbated by a poor diet which apparently includes dog. We rejoin the party as they investigate further. For the love of heavens above, exclaimed Sister Elaine. I can't believe you ate the dog. What were you thinking? The disheveled man pointed out that food was scarce when you have no money, even in the fabulous city of Phoenix. As Cabe Silvertongue examined the canine corpse, the others asked the man how he found himself in such dire straits. The man began to tell his tale of woe to the PCs, which included his name, Dingus Overmeyer. He explained that a year ago, he was in charge of an orphanage for the city, but it had burnt down and killed most of the orphans. He went to the city fathers to ask that it be rebuilt, but was turned down due to funding. As others listened to the plight of Dingus, Cabe let out a loud, Whew! The group turned to see the bard twirling the collar on his finger. It says Talon, not the dog we're looking for. Dingus wished the group well and told them that if they ever struck it rich, to remember to help those who can't help themselves. Lady Irena and the others looked at Welby, who groaned loudly. The halfling rogue reached into his pocket and pulled forth one, then two gold crowns and gave it to the man, albeit reluctantly. Overjoyed, Dingus Overmeyer profusely thanked each member of the party and wished them well. The dirty children smiled at the gift for the first time in several weeks. They wished somebody well. Sister Elaine imparted a brief blessing on the group before the party left the chamber and headed back south down the main sewer line. Fargus pointed out that his torch was starting to fade and the half elf retrieved another from his backpack and lit it, providing more illumination. Following the sewage, the party came to an intersection and had to make a decision. After several minutes, the group opted to continue south following the flow and entered an expansive chamber that was longer than it was wide. The damp and musty conditions did little to improve their moods and they spotted a large pool of water with all manners of debris wedged into it. The group moved through the mossy chamber and found another egress that led to ground level, but it was secured by an iron gate that could not be budged. As Fargus and Cabe struggled to pop open the gate, Lady Irena, Sister Elaine, and Welby O'Toole examined the pile that created a dam effect in front of an exit to the south. Welby opted to jump on the small mountain of trash and energetically proclaimed himself King of Trash while striking a pose. His companions broke out into laughter and mockingly bowed to their leader who waved his hands majestically. My first order of business as your king is... But his words were cut short as a giant frog leaped from behind the pile and knocked the halfling into the fetid water. The elven mage and human cleric moved to assist, but were also tackled by additional creatures. The ranger and bard dismissed the rusty gate and went to help their associates. Two additional frogs appeared, with one striking the bard, but the other one hitting Fargus's torch burning itself, but knocking the illumination from the ranger's hand onto the only dry spot on the floor. Fargus drew his blade and began to hack at the large amphibian. As the other members of the group attempted to regain their feet, they found themselves at odds with the aggressive sewer creatures. Cabe was the first to his feet and used his short sword and dagger repeatedly against the creature. Lady Irena began to cast a spell but a wet tongue extended out of her foe's mouth and wrapped her arms up. She countered with a kick to the soft underbelly to the creature, causing it to lurch to one side. 
Sister Elaine was fighting from a prone position and had her opponent right where she wanted it. A quick flip of her legs sent the creature into the trash pile where it retreated quickly to the rear. Welby found his small size a huge disadvantage as the opponent had wrapped its tongue around the rogue and was beginning to swallow him whole. The cleric looked side to side attempting to decipher who to help first and determined Welby was in dire need of assistance. Moving quickly through the ankle deep water, she lunged and grabbed the halfling's legs as the rogue was being dragged down into the creature's gullet. The tugging was enough to stop Welby from sliding further down, but she was not strong enough to free him. As Cabe finished off his foe, Fargus sidestepped him and sliced through the frog's tongue that had wrapped up the mage before grabbing the torch that was creeping towards the water, risking it going out. Lady Irena quickly stepped over with Sister Elaine and grabbed one of the halfling's legs. The concerted effort was enough to yank the small rogue free, but knocked over both women in the process. The giant frog blinked twice and leapt at the threesome, lying in a pool of sewage. As they looked on in horror, Cabe Silvertongue sprang into action and buried both short sword and dagger into the creature's side as he attacked. His momentum knocked the creature over to its side and onto the floor, dead from the double blade penetration. Fargus ran up with the torch as several more sets of eyes appeared, but then fled south through the partially blocked opening. As the group regained their feet, they discovered they only had suffered minor wounds. Nodding to each other, Lady Irena was the first to speak. I think we can pass on that southern tunnel and we should move east. The group nodded in agreement and brushed themselves off as best they could. Lady Irena and Elaine waved their robes but could not remove the wetness or the smell from the sewers off their robes. Dejected, but putting on a stoic face, they soldiered on behind Fargus and Welby, with Cabe chuckling at their appearance, bringing up the rear. The group moved down several winding tunnels until they found a light in a chamber near the end of the corridor. Fargus stopped to avoid letting their light announce their presence. Turning to the group, he nodded to Lady Arena, who moved up through the debris, and using her elven dark vision, proceeded quietly into the darkness. The party watched as she became silhouetted in front of the opening before returning to them. It appears that there are three vagrants going through the debris in the next room. I didn't see any weapons and noticed two additional exits from the room. The group discussed their options but found themselves divided on the best course. After several minutes, it was finally decided that Sister Elaine and Welby O'Toole would enter the room as scouts. If everything was okay, the rest would come in. If the vagrants were something else, the group would have the advantage of surprise. Sister Elaine attempted to brush the dirt off her clerical robes with little success as Welby watched her and popped grapes into his mouth. Cabe noticed and asked him where he found the grapes, but waved off the answer and rolled his eyes. The duo wandered into the torchlit room with a wave and hello to the trio. The rest stood outside the room and watched from the shadows. Welby began to pepper the three scruffy men with questions, but stepped back as each quickly drew rough-looking blades and advanced on the pair. Elaine and Welby each began to babble as they began to beg for their lives while positioning themselves so their associates could jump the bandits from behind. With the three men squaring off against the pair, Sister Elaine and Welby looked at each other before laughing loudly. Puzzled, the men paused, but then advanced aggressively before crumbling to the ground. "'About time, guys,' remarked the rogue, as he looked at their three associates brandishing logs that had been used to smash over the bandits' heads. Everyone chuckled, but then searched the room, finding enough rope to bind the men, and going through their pockets for items of interest. Welby complained loudly as he pocketed several coins. Fargus pointed out that he was shocked that men digging through trash in the sewers weren't laden with gold, which got an angry look from the halfling. The ranger grabbed one of the lit torches and examined the exits, opting for the southern one. Everyone ready, he quipped, and the group formed back into their investigatory line, heading down the dank tunnel. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. 
please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.